I'm a guy, he's got a jail, I got probation fees, I need somewhere to stay. I'm not gonna go for a woman who works out five days a week and looks good. I'm gonna go for the bigger girl. I'm gonna say, you know, there's more of a chance that she'll be willing to compromise because deep down inside she feels like maybe she has to compensate for the lack of the aesthetics. So real quick, before you flood my comments, yes, I know this post is old, but it was in a plus size group on Facebook that I'm in and it recently just came up. So I wanted to comment on it because I have something to say about it. First of all, the implication that a woman is not beautiful or good looking because she's plus size is backwards as hell. And she's very dumb for even implying that because there are plenty of beautiful plus size women. So that was dumb and that was void. But the but we got to look at the averages for a second. Most of the time, if you're plus size, and I don't, you know, strictly speaking here for a second, dude, the wording is kind of diminished severely over the last few years. Being plus size no longer means what plus size is, dude. If you're literally sitting here going, you're plus size, for instance, it really, that's what we're saying right now, dude. <laughs> I don't know about that, dude. Definitely not plus size, dude. Okay, look, if you're obese, um, you're most definitely that's you're severely diminishing the looks that you once had if I can't see jawline if I can't see forehead if I can't really identify how many necks you have and where your chin start then I'm not really identifying many beauty features and one of the key aspects of why people think people are so beautiful are the health features the health you're looking at somebody and you're going wow this person has a rib cage this person has biceps this person has a neckline these are all health indicators because it tells you that this person takes care of themselves he's at least limitedly if you're fat you're most definitely not taking care of yourself so yeah that's a factual statement on that one and then also i think if you gain weight you are fundamentally diminishing the natural beauty that your that your body has in order to emanate right so like if you're if you're like a nine or a ten which most people aren't and you start gaining weight 100% in very in most scenarios, you'll turn from a 9 to a 10 to an 8 or a 7. And that will severely go down as you continue to gain weight. I am 100% sure on that. You're literally getting rid of all of the major body. Like when somebody looks at somebody that's very attractive and they go, why is this person attractive? And we're talking about women. Most of the time you're going to go for hair, eyes, neck, maybe breast, maybe like other body parts, the curves of a woman. Um, I know a lot of people will sit there and say, Plus size women have curves. I don't know where you're, what you're talking about. Curves, like where are the curves exactly? I see lumps. I see a lot of lumps. I see a lot of like, you know, like, uh, what's the, what's the word I'm talking about? Kind of like, you know, when you had Play-Doh when you were a kid and you just kind of left it out in the sun, then you went back and got it. And then it was like kind of clumpy. That is exactly what it's like to be a plus size woman and man. But the thing is for most men, most dudes already look busted in general. So we're not really held up to any particular standard and we are talking about women here. So I get what she's saying. But if your example is, well, I don't know why she would say plus size women are just generally more unattractive compared to unplus size women. That's just true. Uh, you can probably name like four or five women that are maybe looking better because they gained a lot of weight compared to the women that didn't. But that is literally few and far between. And if that's your example, you're going to the extremes to try to make this claim validified. That because there are plenty of beautiful plus size women. But the averages are not there. That's like saying like you like, oh, there are plenty of people. That's like somebody trying to advocate for not wearing your seatbelt during a car, like during driving your car, because the chances of you get into a car accident, you you might survive. Uh, if you get into a car accident without your seatbelt compared to when you did have your seatbelt, like I'm sure there are examples of somebody having an increased chance of life if they were not wearing their seatbelt compared to when they were wearing the seatbelt. But we all know you should wear your fucking seatbelt because more times than not, averages here, you're going to survive a lot longer if you were wearing your seatbelt compared to not. So that was dumb and that was void. But the other- I would love to just have a conversation with these people because they, they're so confident in what they say and then it, they just say some completely dumb shit. By the way, this outfit is not it. The part I wanted to comment on was the nuance of compromise and what we believe that society tells us as plus size women that we have to compromise in order to get by or to get the standard. Or Everybody has to compromise for one thing or another. A lot of people have a very, very high understanding of themselves. A lot of people think that they're more, way more valuable than they are. And that's okay. Nobody wants to be with somebody that's average. So most people will try to overinflate themselves to think that they can get more than what they actually have. And that's fine. Everybody's doing that to one degree or another. But it's just very interesting when somebody can literally be very, very overweight or obese and sit here and say, you don't have to compromise on anything. Are you fucking dumb? Of course you have to compromise on shit. You're literally, physically speaking, very unattractive. And if you're a woman, this is like your primary chip when it comes to gambling. It's going to be the fact that you're attractive. And I know there are going to be people out there that say, but women have more to offer. You're right. Women do have more to offer, but you're dating men and men usually are going for women that are attractive. And that's just the way it is. I know it sucks to say that, but there's a reason why women tend to cater more towards the 
fem- the, 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 the beauty standard, whereas men don't. Men are literally walking around like trash consistently. And uh, there's no beauty standard for men. I mean, of course, men have gotten better looking over the past 20 years or so, 100%. Men have gotten way better looking compared to what they used to be looking like. But that doesn't change the fact that women are almost always chosen for their beauty over anything else, first and foremost. I'm not saying the other characteristics are not valuable. Of course they are. But most of the time, if you're dating men, they're looking for the they're looking for the beauty features first and foremost. So if your beauty features are severely diminished and you're a woman and you're wondering why you're not getting reception, it's because you're fat and that's not a good thing. Being fat in general is not a good thing, um, especially if you're talking about dating, but being in general, dude, you're literally unhealthy to a different degree, bro. I mean, you're like the physical embodiment of yogurt that's been caught in a water balloon just left in the sun. It's not good. It's not attractive. It's actually really gross, especially because you guys have a uh, undesirable smell most of the time. And I'm not just talking about plus size women. I've been around a lot of plus size dudes and a lot of dudes that don't wear deodorant because I knew I know several dudes firsthand that have made sticks of deodorants last four years. And a lot of the dudes you might be asking, how did they let how did they get a stick of deodorant to last four years? You just don't wear it. Uh, he, I, I knew a dude that literally had deodorant, but he forgot he had it until like four months after he bought it. And then he looked under his bed. He's like, oh, right, I got deodorant. Sometimes you don't care because like, what am I even doing today? I guess I'm just going to the grocery store. You work from home. You don't need to wear deodorant. It is what it is. I'm not trying to justify not wearing deodorant. I think you should wear deodorant because you smell. But still, um, a lot of people don't wear it because they just don't have reasons to wear it. Kind of like the same way that I don't wash my feet. Why would I need to wash my feet? I'm literally clean on my foot. I just let the water and the soap from the top half cascade off the top down to the bottom. I'm good. I don't need to scrub it down with a washcloth to get the barnacles off. By the way, my feet are delectable. If anybody were to suck on my toes, you would get no complaints, okay? My toes are more delectable than most women's toes. And most women actually take care of their toes. And I'm willing to die on that hill. Anyway, I don't know what we're talking about, but or to get the minimum. I don't like the idea that she said that they- Well, you you do realize in order to get the minimum, you yourself, well, look, you can get minimum, which minimum, by the way, is basic. Like, you know, this is like the bare minimum. Uh, you are not bare minimum. I got to keep it a buck. You might have other characteristics. Like, for instance, I'm going to keep it a buck with you. If there was like a stat line of 50, let's say 50% was minimum. Uh, your 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 physical appearance is literally like like four. And then maybe you have other stat lines that get you up to that 50% marker. But most people are not going to look at that first and foremost because it's like it's like looking at a car. A lot of people are looking at the visual of the car first. A lot of people see the car and they go, that's a really nice car. Not many people are popping a hood. Not many people are checking the trunk. Not many people are checking the, the capacity of the car unless it looks good. If it doesn't look good, most people are immediately dissuaded by it, right? If they, if they see a car and it's dented up and it's busted or whatever, most people are going, I don't want that car. And the other guy go, whoa, 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 but it's got really nice interior. It's got a really good engine, really great gas mileage. Most people go, I don't care. That shit looks terrible. I don't want to buy it. That's what most people are going to do when they see you. And I'm sure that this woman might have a lot of redeeming qualities, but that's irrelevant because I know and you know, you're not getting the, the correct reception that you think you deserve because of the way you look. And that's obvious. And that's okay to acknowledge, dude. So yes, I understand when you say we're fat and we're just supposed to accept the fact that we get the bare minimum. Yeah. Uh, if you get the bare minimum, that actually might be way more than what you are. So anyway. And by the way, I'm sick of people just assuming that they are the bare minimum. A lot of people are not the bare minimum. Bare minimum implies that you take care of yourself. Bare minimum means you know how to like wash your clothes. Bare minimum implies that you make make money. It's like, a lot of people don't realize that like in order to be bare minimum, bare minimum, you have to wash your butthole. And this goes for guys. A lot of dudes don't wash their asshole. Wash your fucking butthole, guys. Or to get the standard or to get the minimum. I don't like the idea that she said that they would compromise with someone who was not as good for them or up to the standard of everyone else because that woman was plus size. Yeah, because if you're fat and you're, well, first of all, dude, plus size, we gotta get rid of this term. Plus size is so ambiguous. I'm, I'm sick of this fucking term, dude. That's like saying gay and you're talking about lesbians. Never in your life. If you're going, look, if you're going on the hub and you type in gay porn, are you gonna be surprised when you see dick? No, because guess what? You're not looking for lesbian porn. Sure, gay is incorporated within the lesbian genre, like genre, like lesbian slides into gay, but nobody ever in their right mind ever decided to look up gay porn to try to find vagina. That's never gonna happen. You might find it on like the 98th page. You might find one vagina. It's probably not even real either. It's probably like a flashlight or something like that. But the point I'm making is, plus size has lost all of its value at this point. I mean, if you're gonna consider yourself to be a plus size woman, I sure hope you are accurate in that description because if you are somebody that is 400 pounds and you're talking about some I'm plus size, get the 
fuck off my mouth right now, dude. Suck me off. That shit is ridiculous. You're misusing that word, okay? So, 100% stop using this fucking word. Stop using plus size. I forgot what she said because I got so caught up on that word. Them or up to the standard of everyone else. Because right, because you guys are literally not taking care of yourselves. If you're fat, you're not taking care of yourself. By definition, you're fat, meaning you are unhealthy. That is not attractive for most people. Because that woman was plus size. And ultimately... I hate this idea in society because whether people say it out loud or not, that's what a lot of society believes about plus size people. Yeah, well, of course. I'm willing to say it though. Um, you're mostly, you're most definitely unattractive as a plus size person. There's a lot of things I don't like about society that you just kind of have to put up with because like, what can I do about it? Like, I know that when I'm dating women and they go, um, it's so, like, when are you going to buy me jewelry? And you go, oh, I, I don't, I don't know. I just like, I don't really like jewelry, but I guess I'll buy it for you. And then you go in the story like, oh, uh, how much is that? And they go, yeah, this is like literally your whole wallet. And you go why like what am i getting from that like what is that i don't understand like what does it accrue value no oh okay what the fuck am i buying this shit for because you look pretty on you like there's a bunch of things that i don't like buying but i know that other people like buying and it's just like kind of hurts me sometimes because it's like why do you want why do you want a 700 hundred dollar coach bag with a wallet it doesn't even look good I don't, like what are you wearing this for I'm, it's like i just i've been wearing the same north face backpack for like 10 years and it's like perfect condition i, I don't I, I don't even take care of it like i throw I, i've had milk explode in the back of it and i've never washed it and it's still fine anyway so we should take what we get okay and you should be happy you get it because you're fat as a bigger woman my whole life people have told me all the time that i should take what i should get whether that's food whether that's people whether damn that whether that be food is kind of crazy bro maybe that's not a good thing they told you that shit bro but i would just love to know uh do you have a man's is, is it a good relationship uh, are you are you right now in a relationship that's what i would love to know because a lot of these people will sit there and project the fact that nah i know what i am i know what i'm worth this shit the fuck i know that i can get any man i want the hell and guess what? Big girls do it the best. You know how it is. Check me out. Mm hmm. Look how good I look and shit. Lashes done. Edges on fleek. The fuck? You know I be looking good. That shit is always like completely mute to me because if you got no men and dudes ain't trying to look at you, then I don't know what that is. Like, is that just helping you or could it be that it's hurting you? It's probably hurting you, right? Because you're not getting the reception that you want. You consistently complain about it. And don't get me wrong. A lot of people have a lot of problems finding dates, right? A lot of people do. I know for I know firsthand. It's very difficult, especially on dating apps, right? You don't think I've ever been compelled to turn gay because I've been on dating apps and the only person that hit me hits me up is a, is a man that identified himself as a woman on the dating app so he can hit me up and try to convince me to be gay. You don't think that's concerning for me? It is very concerning, okay? I've, I've had to question shit multiple times but the point i'm t the point i'm making is if you're not getting if you're if you're putting this out here and you're saying that it's so great and it's so amazing but you're not getting that same reception back from other people you might have convinced yourself of a big fallacy that's relationships whether that's love whether that's the way that men who might not be attracted to me treat me we've all been taught to give plus size people especially women <laughs> don't be women of color any type of way because we are taught to be fat phobic and I hate that. Most of the time, if we're talking about why men are not treated the same way that women are when it comes to being fat, most men are not judged based off physical shape and stuff like that. Most people don't even care. A lot more women are really, really, really open to dating fatter men compared to fatter men dating fatter women. That's you know, obvious. Everybody knows that. Like most women are looking for the secondary features. So yeah, I get you. And then when we're talking about Plus size um, fat black women or fat black women. I don't even mean, plus size fat black women. I don't know. It's like doubling it up, I guess. Like I'm not hungry, but I'm hungry, hungry. But um, I, I, I think I read somewhere that a lot of the black community in America, specifically women, are dealing with a lot of problems that have to do with being overweight. And that's tough. That's really tough. Uh, I don't know what their exact reasoning for that could be. Maybe somebody else down below can can tell me, enlighten me why so many um, black women are overweight or and or obese. I don't know. I haven't looked into the statistics, but I've seen some before that black the black community, specifically women, are struggling with that. Somebody can let me know down below, though. So with that being said, I created a group called Plus Paradise Getaways. We are a body positive. Yeah, you ain't getting nobody in that fucking. You ain't getting nobody in that group, dude. That's a that's a long name. There's too many syllables in there nobody's looking that up nobody is that's too many syllables it's got to be something short and sweet and catchy that shit i don't even know what you just said something about paradise plus size baddies i don't know dude that would be way better plus size baddies that would be the best oh man just do that plus size baddies dude what you just gonna come up with a facebook group so you know fat women can come together and 
you know, dispel their terrible beliefs to each other and just get yes queen consistently. Doesn't that sound kind of terrible? Am I wrong? It sounds monstrously depressing travel group and we take luxury trips okay because i said you know what if i'm gonna create a travel group for plus size people we are going to have the best okay we are staying at a five star resort in montego bay in december and this is for everybody in every body type okay i just don't understand so like you have a quarrel with that young lady saying that fat women may have to get people of lower standards or have to lower their standards in order to find adequate uh love lives and you go well i'm about to have plus size women coming over and we about to stand in montego bay okay yeah sounds like a pretty that sounds like a great solution yeah. and this is not gonna be some cute little trip where we kumbaya no no no. it's going to be the most luxurious at the nicest resort in montego bay how much does this cost though uh are you paying for this whole thing i mean i'll show up i guess i mean if you're i mean if you're paying for that shit to be honest though I think that the money that you would have spent on that trip, you could just give it to me. Like, I'm good. I don't really want to be going anywhere. I don't know where Montego Bay is or wherever that is, bro. It's probably some, somewhere in Africa. I'm not really fucking with that. You know, I'm not trying to go to Montego Bay, whether that be in Africa or, or, or Cancun or wherever. I'm, just give me the, how much is that? Like, I'll just take like 2000 Like, just give me like $2,000 and I'll, I'll, I'll just take that. Like, you just call even. Because I'm not playing that, okay? We play small to be big our whole lives and I will not allow it. What does that even mean? Like we're plus size girlies, we deserve to go to Montego Bay. Okay, I, I guess. So if you wanna join us on our trip, I would love for you to come. <laughs> plus size at Paradise Getaways, dude. It, it, like nobody even knows what this is. Nobody's contributing to it either. Like, can you imagine literally joining this group and they go, yeah, we're all asking for everybody to donate a quick $350. Even This is gonna go directly into my bank account so we can all come together the the plane tickets like i wonder how you're organizing this and like would you really trust this individual with your money like that i wouldn't do i don't even know who this person is i don't even know what this has to do with settling for lower quality men okay we are gonna have private events we're gonna have uh self-esteem workshops we're gonna have a boat you guys are adults party honey we're gonna have a good time but we're gonna make sure that we uplift and celebrate and have the best okay so if you want like what like not nah, hot dogs and shit you guys gonna have those like little triangle sandwiches or whatever with the really small deli meats is that what you're going to have? Maybe like those uh, martinis with the little, like the, the olives at the end of them? Is that what you're going to have? What do you mean like the best? Like what are you guys talking about? Go, you can head to our website plusparadisegetaway.com or you can follow us on Instagram at plusparadisegetaways with an S. Website without an S. Instagram with an S. But I would love to have you. Yeah, bro. It's just not going to work, bro. I, I have no idea what the even purpose of this and is. And I would love to start changing the narrative about what maybe change the name maybe change the name dude make it less this is a goddamn bro i had to write a whole fucking documentary synopsis on this shit deserve because we deserve the absolute best and i'm sick of it so i created something to make sure that we don't ever have to worry about that again so i just it doesn't make sense so you're sitting here like you're complaining that you don't like it that plus size girlies have to settle for less so your solution to that was to set up a plus size getaway for other plus size women to go and have uplifting conversations while eating little tiny little triangle sandwiches i don't i don't understand like what well, why why okay i mean maybe i just don't maybe it's not it's not for me to understand personally i'm not a plus size woman personally i don't know if you guys can notice so i don't know exactly it, but maybe if you know anything about this down below you can go ahead and enlighten me i have no idea why this is even a thing but anyway well, i hope you join me i'll see you in montego bay jamaica <laughs> oh it's in jamaica Fat people don't deserve love. Yeah, I mean, I kind of thought for a long time, like, I remember, I thought that Jamaica was in Africa for a really long time, up until, like, I was, uh, you know, when I was younger, probably around 25, like, you know, I just didn't know. We keep seeing that one white girl who's going viral on that TikTok where- Yeah, uh, it's, uh, Peaches, right? She's saying- Is it Peaches? No. Is it Peach? What am I talking about? Pearly things. Just pearly things. Yeah, my bad. By the way, Jess probably thinks is a deplorable human being that doesn't actually believe anything she says. People don't or deserve. Maybe she does, but maybe she just believes it in a very like financial way. Love, if you're 300 pounds, no one's gonna want to fuck you. Like, babes, you got a shit personality. No one's gonna want to date you, even if you were the hottest woman in the world. Personally speaking, if you're 300 pounds, it's not that nobody will ha want to have sex with you. That's easy. Like having sex with somebody is very, very easy, especially for women. Men, it's a little bit difficulter, but for women, especially, it's like whatever. Like, I mean, if I'm being honest with you, just go on a dating app, you'll find plenty of dudes that want to have sex with you, or just walk down the street for like 10 minutes and go, hey. 
do you want to have sex? I'm sure every single dude and their mom would probably go, yes, yes, 100%. I, my dick is out right now. Um, you may not even have to ask. There are some guys that are just walking around just perpetually beating off. Like I just saw that story about that woman that was at a gas station and some guy literally was pre-beating and he like literally beat it off on a girl's leg while she was in line to pay for her gas. Like he was just, I don't know how exactly he was able to like, I don't know how he was able to like have the the bust ready and prepared for that particular occasion to bust on her leg. And he busted on her leg and ran off. Like he like can you imagine that shit? What kind of drive by is that, dude? But anyway, he shot it on her leg and ran off and then she started crying, which is uh you know, it's justified, dude. I mean, really think about the scenario that you're in right now. You're minding your own business, you just got gas for your your Toyota Corolla, and you're going in to pay for it. And then this dude just randomly comes up and all you hear is <gasps> And you look down like, ah! And then you you run after him. Obviously, you're going to start crying. You got bus butter all over the side of your leg right now. You're a, you're a, Maybe you're a desirable young lady. This would never happen to me because I'm not desirable enough to have dudes walk up and bust on my leg personally. So, I mean, it's a good thing. I'm not, I don't want people to run up and bust on my leg personally. It's not something I like. But uh, I wouldn't recommend anybody having that experience. But I don't know if it's like, it's not really a flex to be like, yeah. Um, plus size women can get any dick they want. Any woman in general can get any penis they want. It's not exactly hard. Anyways, the point of this video is actually not to shit on crusty ass B words. I actually really want to talk about plus size dating and relationships. I've dated women, I've dated men, um, but I'm pretty much going to be talking about my experience with dating men right now. By the way, some of y'all have asked what blush I use. I'll do youth 40 on this side and tower 20 on this side to compare. Like I've dated skinny men, I've dated really fit men, I've dated pretty much men of all body sizes. To sizes and types and I've just realized that dating fat men is definitely the best for me and obviously there's a range of fat like for example my partner right now is on the fitter end of like plus size I guess like he is a dad bod basically tower 28 is more matte euphoria a little bit more natural and oily and dewy anyways I've never had any problems dating because one I'm pretty and yes I'm fat and pretty I think maybe we let other people decide. You know what I'm saying, dude? It's very easy for somebody to go, I'm delectable, I'm beautiful, I'm amazing, I'm fantastic, I'm the most desirable person ever. I also think that if you're plus size and you want to date plus size individuals, that's awesome. You know, that's great. That's awesome, dude. One for inclusion, things such and so forth. But I think, personally speaking, the compatibility might be a little bit better because you guys are just going to sit down for the most of the day. Um, but there's going to be other issues there. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever had sex with a plus size individual or somebody that's very, very overweight. It's not practical in any way, even coming from somebody like me, who is, I would go on the, I would definitely put myself on the more on the end of, uh, acrobatically inclined. Like I'm at, definitely. And for somebody, uh, to have sex with me and they'd be plus size, I'm doing most of the work and it's always impractical, even when I'm doing it. Like sometimes you don't even know what's going on. Like you're just sitting there going, you know, what am I even doing right now? Where am I? Why is it so dark? You know, am I even doing anything right now? Are, am I in the correct spot? What's going on? I literally can't see anything. And I would never recommend oral sex on man or woman if they're plus size. I mean, that is just diabolical, dude. I mean, thinking about the environment, it's probably worse for men because most men don't even wash their meats in general. But uh, if you're a woman, you got to understand it's like a greenhouse naturally going on down there, right? And that could be hot depending on what you're doing. But um, if you're like under the covers and then you have like extra, extra layers and now you got scoliosis because a girl picked up her stomach and threw it on your back while you were down there, it's going to be very, very diff It's going to be very, very difficult for you to be able to perform your activities when you start looking like um, you start like, you know, shaking like Michael J. Fox because the, the, you just like purposely induce scoliosis upon yourself and stuff like that like you're gonna be you know it's just not when, when you're done with oral sex and you just you like sitting there laying on the bed like stephen hawkins because you can't walk anymore it's just not worth it to me personally those two things are not mutually exclusive and two i always date men or go for men who i know are not going to make me feel bad about my body I just really would hope that if you mean not feel bad about your body, it just depends. Like sometimes the feelings of you feeling bad about your bodies are sometimes justified because there there should be things about yourself that you don't like. And there should be ways in which you can maybe remedy those things. Like for instance, if you don't like the fact that your biceps are small, you can go to the gym. If you don't like the fact that your thighs are small, you can go to the gym. If you want to lose some weight, you can lose some weight, right? 
And if there are things about yourself that you cannot change, I'm pretty sure this girl has alopecia. She can't change that. There's nothing she can do about that. I don't think there is. Um, it's okay. Just accept that. It is what it is. Like you got alopecia. It's you know, it's a one and done thing. Accept it. Um, hopefully you're not. Hopefully you're not with somebody that's gonna uh, you know emphasize that or make you make fun of you for that. Hopefully, um, and that's th that's probably beneficial. But if you're with somebody and they go, hey, maybe it would be better if you just decided to lose some weight, and you count that as somebody trying to. I don't know, make you feel bad about the fact that you're overweight or fat or whatever. I would go as far as to say that's not a good thing. Like you're probably with somebody that's actually enabling you and you're interpreting that as a bad thing when in reality it could possibly be a good thing because you're just throwing all of these like negative comments in a in a in a pool in a pool of I don't want it. And sometimes those negative comments are extremely beneficial. You should want to be with somebody that pushes you and if they say something you don't like, that's all right because the short term of that don't feel good to me is is way beneficial for you because the long-term effect of that is now you feel better overall. So I think that sometimes these people gotta be thinking about it more critically and looking at it more in a long-term scenario instead of like one or two days where you feel really bad because your boyfriend and or girlfriend told you you're fat as fuck and or your penis is so small that it looks like an acorn was glued to the bottom of your torso. And for me, those are just typically men who are on the bigger side of the spectrum in terms of sizes because Frankly put, they get it. They understand what it's like to have body issues. Sure, but men don't really face the same type of body issues as women because men are not traditionally emphasized in the same way that women are when it comes to body issues, right? Like I've, I've struggled with body issues, but I don't think I could ever compare to how a woman would be struggling with body issues. Even being around a woman that had almost no body issues, she always talks about that shit like way, 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 way more than me. Like the amount of times I've been with girls and they go, you know, I got to work on my hair. I got to like do my makeup. I got to do this. Otherwise I look ugly, start crying over the fact that their hair is dry. You know, they, the shirt that they ordered off Sheen doesn't fit in the same way that they thought it was. So they have a, me a total complete mental, you know, like collapse. And I'm just sitting here like, I don't even understand. What's, I've been wearing the same underwear for three days. Like, I don't even know if I've worn, like I have, a, I have the same shirts that I've been wearing for the last seven years and you're crying to me because your hair is dry. It's a different ball game. So, I mean, I get what she's saying. It's definitely probably easier to relate. But if you if you want to relate to somebody when it comes to, um, you know, definitely like physical appearance and stuff like that, I think probably women to women is better. Um, men don't really have that same type of experience. I'm not saying men can't like, you know, have the, uh, they can't have the ability to like understand it. They can. But it's just like, I just think that that was a not a good point. I just don't think it was personally. And not having to explain myself is literally the best thing ever. Like I can kind of see that too, because there are a bunch of times that I've been in relationships where I I'm in I'm into some stuff, right? Not like sexual stuff, but I'm into like whatever. And I really am interested in this drama that's going on or whatever, right? And I'm with somebody that knows nothing about this particular aspect of whatever I'm into. So I have to explain it to them. I have to explain the base groundwork of whatever I'm talking about. So I have to explain this, 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 and this. And then eventually when I finally get to the drama point, they still don't understand because it's like they're so far out of the realm of whatever I'm, I'm interested in that it's almost like I should have just not said anything at all because it's so disappointing of the response. It's like a one or two syllable. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, I can see that. It just ends there. It's never satisfying and it sucks perpetual massive meaty massive man meats so it's, it's better sometimes to be in a relationship with somebody that can, you can relate to because that just means that you have more talking points but that also might not always be the great thing because it's really good to be around people that have different opinions than you or people have different hobbies because that means that you can ingest you can ingest those hobbies as well like it's just so comforting that on a personal level they get it and so that's why i'm just automatically attracted to men who are on that bigger end anyways this is not me saying that there should not be intersized relationships because that is not what i'm saying at all i'm just saying from my own experience as a plus size woman i've loved dating other plus size people so if you're a plus size woman who's had negative experiences dating straight size individuals maybe take a ride on the plus size terrain and on that same note if you're a plus size woman who wants to go for a straight size guy but you're scared that he won't be able to pick you up or you won't why is it even a thing of like, I'm scared that he's not going to be able to pick me up? Why is that even a thing? What I feel like that should never be included in general. First of all, um, if you're a plus size person, why are you ever expecting to be picked up in general? You know how impractical it is to pick up giant quantities of weight when my back hurts? Not doing it, dude. I'm not going to induce scoliosis or like break my back because you want to be picked up. Why is this even a prerequisite? Why are you even bringing that up? It's so weird. Size woman who wants to go for a straight size guy, but you're scared that he won't be able to pick you up or you won't fit into his hoodies. Bro, these are so, that's such a crazy ass thing, man. Uh, dude, this is like, 
then just don't be fat. If that's the case, like if you want a dude to pick you up, if this is a prerequisite for you, which I've never, okay, I've been in relationships before where girls wanted to be picked up, but I've never heard it verbalized like that. Like it needs to be a thing or like I am hoping that the guy that I'm dating can pick me up. I guess it's probably like a passive thing that you want to happen in the back of your mind, but I've never heard somebody say that outright like that. Like I've never heard that, dude. To me, that'd be the equivalent of a guy going, I wish my, like, the girl that I date next I wish her vagina tasted like applesauce. Like, it, to me, it's just like, it'd be good. I'm sure it'd be great it, that your girlfriend's vagina didn't taste like pennies and it tastes like apple jo- applesauce. But that doesn't mean that's going to happen, right? I mean, is that really something that we're going to be banking on here, dude? That just kind of seems like really, really weird to me. Like, the hoodies argument is like a little bit better, but simultaneously, like, come on now. What, do you, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't even know if you want to steal any of my hoodies, bro. Like, I've been wearing the same hoodies for like years at this point. Don't fucking worry about that. That is literally the most irrelevant aspect of a relationship. True, true. That's exactly what you're, what are you even talking about? You are hot and... Well, let's, let's slow down a little bit. You got back up a little bit too. I'm getting a little bit of, you know, melting my camera a little bit. My screen's starting to get a little bit of fuzziness on the sides there. You got back up a little Don't bit. Don't fucking worry about that. That is literally the most irrelevant aspect of a relationship. You are hot and that's why he wants to date you. And... It's also not a good thing to just have that be the only reason. Like, I know I said previously that looks are the primary thing that that guys are looking for. But if we're talking about dating, um, yeah, there's going to be more stuff. Like, looks are going to get you through the door. Hopefully, uh, when you start dating the guy, he has more reasons to date you than, damn, this bitch be looking good, dog. Damn, man. I love the way this girl looking shit, man. Her ass cheeks be domesticated. I love that shit. And obviously, you have an amazing personality because all fat people are hilarious. Mm. That's also not true. I've seen many fat people that, whew, no way that's true, dude. I've met plenty of fat people that are dry as fuck verbally. People that don't even contribute to conversations in any way, dude. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. And yes, that is a generalization. Do not second guess yourself or your worth. You should be at least understand. Okay, don't second guess yourself if you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, second guess yourself 100%. You shouldn't be applying to be a truck driver without the necessary prerequisites in order to be a truck driver. You should be second guessing in certain scenarios. If you're fat as fuck and you're wondering whether or not this guy thinks your butt cheeks are looking good or not, that's okay to have that question in the back of your head. Some, Even people that know their butt cheeks look good are still questioning whether or not they look good to somebody that they like. So it's okay to second guess yourself. I don't think that's the proper way of looking at it. I I understand what she's saying. Like she's saying like be confident within yourself. Maybe say that. That's definitely a better statement than uh, don't second guess. Sometimes second guessing might be the right move. To sum this video up, don't wait until you lose the weight to start dating. Unlike what that white girl in the beginning of this video said about fat people, please always remember that at any size, you are deserving of love. Nah, nope, nope, can't do it. At any size, you're deserving of love. I know we see a lot of my 600 pound life, right? And every single time I see one of those, they're always married. They always have a husband. They always have a wife. And a lot of people look at that and go, how the fuck didn't they get this stuff? Because they're, they have low morals when it comes to those people, okay? It's not a flex to be in a relationship. It's a flex to be in the right relationship. And even then, I wouldn't be flexing about it because nobody gives a fuck that you're in a relationship. So I see a lot of people that say that you deserve love and you deserve love at any size at that. That's crazy. People die alone literally all the time and they never had love and they never, they died with it. They died with nothing. So I would always err on the side of try hard to find love. And if you want it, then go for it. Sure. I'm, it, but the, the thing is you have to try because uh, there are some people out there that can passively find love. Like they'll just be living their life, find somebody and then booyah, they have the girlfriend, they have the husband and they get married and things like that. That's fine. But for a lot of people and for most people, it's going to be something that you're going to actively have to do and you're going to have to go out of your way to find somebody to be with. You're going to have to pursue opportunities. You're going to have to be a better person. You're going to have to actually put in the work to find somebody to be with. I would never go as far as to say that everybody deserves love because if you say that you deserve love, you're telling me that I'm going to get it eventually, which is not true because that is not how this works. That is like, if I just believe that I'm going to be a millionaire one day and I just sit down on my couch and just wait, am I going to be a millionaire? No. Fuck no. Unless I'm beating my dick and I'm recording that shit for OnlyFans. So no, that's not going to happen, okay? I'm not going to be rubbing Vaseline and Petroleum jelly on my fucking stomach hair just to, and, and then, you know, like with no camera in the room, I'm going to have to put that out somewhere. I'm going to have to emphasize my body and my big ass ginormous meatlodon. So no, it's not that you don't deserve, it's not that you deserve love. It's just, you should be, if you want love, go and get it. That's what it should be more so. I, I would never agree with everybody deserves love. It's a crazy statement. So if you want to, go date a fat person, 
go to the skinny person just go put yourself out there and don't let your weight hold you back from that self-love is definitely the best love self-love is just beating off by the way i'm pretty sure that's not what she's talking about well whenever i hear somebody say self-love i'm always thinking like so you're beating off right but getting lit is also fun too true 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 if that's what you want to do i don't know which one of you big back bitches said it but some of y'all are worried about not smelling good because you've got some rolls you got some extra crevices that these little skinny hoes don't have so i mean that's a that's a valid concern that's a really valid concern you got to clean the areas that need to be cleaned if you if you're driving a bigger car and you're traditionally driving a smaller car you're going to be really really shocked at the fact that you need to clean more of that car so yeah, hundred percent. The fact that this is even a video is kind of crazy. But anyway, I'm listening to hearing what this quote unquote big back bitch is going to tell us. We're fixing it today because we're going to have a little chit chat about body care because I've had rolls since the third grade, baby. Okay. So, I mean, I think it's kind of crazy that this girl's had rolls since the third grade, yet she's done nothing about it. If it were me, I don't want to wash more stuff that I already need to wash. I already don't even like doing it in general. Uh, it's always cool to have soap touch body, but dude, if I didn't have to wash myself and still smell good, I wouldn't do it. So, I mean, like... Why would you just have more problems than you want, right? I always ask that question, like, you're fat. Why? Uh, don't like Your life is literally just perpetually living on hard mode. So I don't know why you would just have more problems because you're hungry or you're, you just want more food. I can't even chalk it up to you being hungry. Like, you guys are just stress eating sometimes. <laughs> when I say I'm your big body bestie, I mean it. I have it down to a science at this point. We're going to talk about lotions, body oils, perfumes, all the things. I wish that I had somebody to tell me this when I was insecure and not confident. Or you could just like lose weight so you don't have to deal with any of this stuff. Like you don't have to go to this big back Betty to try to figure out how to properly cleanse your body of all the crevices and the barnacles that you have accrued onto your body because you don't know how to wash yourself properly. Like it's such a crazy thing to be like, let me look up a tutorial on how to properly wash my ginormity body instead of just going to the gym or like practicing a calorie deficit. Like <laughs> I just don't understand why people are doing this shit, but. About all my zhuzhiness, you know what I'm saying? So okay. let's go. It starts in the shower. Wash your ass, bitch. <laughs> Use an antibacterial bar soap. I like the dial gold, but I'm out of it. It's the arms, the coochie, the booty, the rolls, all of it. Wash them all. Rinse your body off. It's, it's too general. Like, I'm going to need more examples. Like, what do you mean wash the rolls? Like, what am I supposed to do exactly, dude? Am I supposed to slide the bar in between the rolls? Is that why you lost yours? And then you can go on with body wash. This is the one that I'm using right now. Salt. Salt. A rain. Right now, the Saltaire Black salt Tide skin hydrating serum. I don't usually have a preference for body washes. If it smells good. I like it. Okay, you can't just tell me like you got this down to a science and be like, yeah. I mean, I don't really know why I bought this. I just kind of bought it because it's like, I, I guess I just, it smelled good. Like, that's not exactly what you want to hear from somebody that just told you she has it down to a science. And also her saying like, oh yeah, use the dial. So by the way, I don't have it right now is... How the fuck are you going to tell me you have it down to a silence and you're literally like dismissing the body wash and you just don't even have the soap that you're, you're claiming is the best. This doesn't sound like somebody that I'd be listening to. I know that you've seen all the girls say, when you get out of the shower, don't dry your body off. When you put your body oil and your lotions on, you want to trap in that moisture. No, you don't. If you have rolls, you're not trapping in moisture. When you get out of the shower, you're going to take your towel. You're going to dry all of the crevices, girl. Get in there too. You can Ugh. leave the water like on your arms your leg any crevices girl you better dry that shit off i just really think that yeah don't yeah definitely dry that off because you're gonna induce they're gonna be people in there they're gonna be civilizations that grow within the crevices so i can 100 percent vouch for that dry off the crevices but i also want to talk about this for a second why do you have crevices can you imagine literally somebody talking about your body like somebody's about to go splunking this shouldn't be a talking point for you if you're fat like nobody should be going yeah there's crevices there's organisms there's people growing it shouldn't be a thing i hate to tell you guys if you have organisms or you have crevices in your body you need to make a change it's, it's a problem it's an issue and i'm sick of people i'm gonna die on this hill i think personally if your body has crevices is not good is not a good thing so try to get rid of those crevices through the practice of losing weight. Now, I understand if you're a woman, you're going to have front butt, you're going to have back butt, and those things might be a little bit bigger or at least, uh, at least like have more spaces to, to fill out in terms of the drying processes. I don't, that's fine. That's good. That's okay. I don't have no problem with that. You have to deal with that regardless. It sucks that you have those things, but I never feel bad about it because my, listen, I barely wash myself adequately. Let's be honest here for a second. I wash good. I wash better than most men, but 
you know, let's be honest here for a second. Most men don't even wash themselves practically. I know a lot, like, I know 50, I know literally probably seven, eight dudes right now that think it's gay to even wash their butthole, let alone even having a butthole. So think about that. I mean, anything, they think I'm gay for washing my butthole, but I'm obviously not. I'm just a cleanly man. But a lot of people will just tolerate this type of behavior and sit there and go, yes, I have these crevices. Let me wash it. Lose the fucking weight, dude. Why the fuck am I watching a tutorial on how to properly wash my ass when I'm 450 pounds where I can just not be 450 pounds, dude? If my butt, if your, if your butt crack literally reaches up to the small of your back and past it, you got an issue. Because if you don't, you're going to trap too much moisture in there and then, and then people are going to start growing. Yeah, civilizations and stuff like that. You're going to start up a whole new, like, you're going to start up a whole new species. And things are going to start to, yeah. I'm going in with this. I have this linked in my Amazon storefront because I feel like if you weigh more than 120 pounds, you need this. 120 pounds? <laughs> this is the Monistat Chafing Relief Powder Gel. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I know many women that are above 130, 140, 150 that have no chafing at all. And I think that's not a good thing to say. It just depends. I think most women probably below 150 probably don't even need this. Put this everywhere. I'm talking everywhere. I used Why? to not be a body oil girl. What do you mean everywhere, bro? That's such a broad term. Like, what do you mean every on, underneath my neck, on my chin, on my forehead? Like everywhere? I didn't like the feeling of it. I felt like, ugh, like I hated it. I'm a body oil girly now. These are my two favorite ones. Okay. Uh, I traditionally know like the black, the black products. You know what I'm talking about? Like uh, those are the ones I use, like the African herbal oils and stuff like that. I don't know, bro, whatever. If I had to choose one though, I would probably choose this one because it's a spray. The Aveeno Daily. Bro, stop it, okay? I got it for you. If you're looking for some good ass oil, cheap oil, I got it, okay? Go to the grocery store, go down to the aisle where they sell the cereals and things like that. Go to the end of that aisle, okay? There's gonna be this great product that a lot of people have been sleeping on, dude. It's traditionally, it's an Italian product, so you know it's probably, you know it's good. Go in there. It starts with C. Uh, what is it called, dude? Um, just buy some canola oil. Just start wiping yourself down with a canola oil. Just go in there. Just start, you know, just start drizzling. It's like three bucks for a giant tub of it. Just, uh, just drench yourself with it, and then just start lathering. Just like, oh man, this oil really doing me right. This oil is like the best, man, dude. I feel so good right now. I feel like the rock right now, dude. Oiled up. I feel real good. Just buy that moisturizing body oil mist you literally yeah i don't know about having oil be missed bro just there's like african herbal body oil or whatever i've never heard of oil that you spray that sounds actually super concerning but i know there's like a pop cap and you just kind of drizzle it on yourself and you do that why would you need to spray i don't understand you're literally gonna rub it on anyway right are you not rubbing it on it doesn't matter your hands are gonna get fucking moisturized anyway so why does it matter that there's a spray that seems irrelevant to me i feel like you're losing some in that spray and rub it in Mmm, I know you can see the glow. And then I go in with the lotion. This one right here, like, oh my God. I know it's overhyped. I know it is. I know all the TikTok girlies talk about her. Nothing compares. I all just use the um just use like traditional Vaseline, uh like cocoa butter shit. I don't know. I, I've only dated black girls, dude. I don't fucking know. Also really like Miss Riri Fenty skin. It smells like a cinnamon roll. Better not be I just don't know if I'm gonna buy like is that lotion buying lotion that you have to like scoop up out of the thing and like put it on like I don't like that dude Just like give me that give me that get in your legs because why are you stopping putting lotion on at your kneecaps girl? Get down there. We're getting into the smell goods We're getting into see like if, because I've only ever dated black girls, dude I'm used to literally just seeing women standing up straight just like naked and just going like this just like this for like 25 minutes just applying mounds of lotion dude just sitting there and i'm just like watching this occur and i'm like when are you gonna be done it's like david there's a process i gotta do this for 25 minutes and make sure i dry properly into the perfumes i go in with a perfume oil it's the vanilla woods by seven virtues i don't think this girl knows what she's talking about if i'm being honest dude i don't know i put it behind my ears on my neck on the back of my neck on my wrists these that i'm about to show you are my everyday fragrances the baccarat rouge dupe from dossier ambery saffron i have gone through so many bottles of this we still look like fucking i just don't understand like like can we just hold up why are we focusing so much on what we smell like why are we focusing so much on the looks why are we still focusing so much on how to like do all this stuff when you just don't have to look like this right like if if you 
picked out a fish out of the ocean and you were like, let me make this shit beautiful. Why would you do that, dude? Just eat that shit. You don't need, like, I just kind of don't know why so many people choose to emphasize themselves in these particular ways when you got bigger problems. I'm not saying you can't know about makeup. I'm not saying you can't know about fragrances, doing your nails and doing your lashes and shit like that. It's fine. You can go ahead and do that stuff. But I just want to know why you choose to focus so heavily on that and you're not choosing to focus on the weight. And I know why you're not because it's easier to learn how to do makeup, nails, uh, getting your shit done, looking at what fra fragrances, because that doesn't require any effort towards you. You just got to know what smells good. That's very easy for most people. And putting in the work to dr to literally dig yourself out of the hole that you have yourself in right now, sorry, crawl yourself out of the hole you, dra you fucking dug yourself into is substantially harder compared to putting on some fragrances or, you know, doing your makeup and shit like that. It's just really sad when I see people that focus so heavy on this shit. And I'm just always thinking like, just lose weight, dude. It just smells so good. The floral marshmallow and these two together, bitch. Like, I get so many compliments when I wear these two together. And when I'm not wearing those, I'm wearing Miss. I also, I remember this girl, I think like, I think I did a video on her originally like last year or something like that, dude. And I'm pretty sure when she was talking, dude, it was, uh, she was putting on a fake accent. I mean, at least I, I thought it was real at the time. She had like that traditional... Oh my God, bitch, the fuck. I'm doing what the hell I want to fucking do. And it's what I want to do because I'm a bad bitch. And you know how the fuck it is. The hell. She was doing one of those accents. And it kind of seems like she's still trying to do it a little bit. But I, I always like am a little bit. Whenever I see somebody doing accents on the internet, I'm always thinking like this particular person is lying. Like they're not doing this shit. This accent is an exaggeration of the truth. And the problem with a lot of the accents or when people put on these facades is that you might be able to do that for a few minutes in a video or you might be able to cut and retake it and then you might be able to do that accent again or whatever. But if you do anything else, like, dude, that's just going to eventually fall because nobody can maintain that for like years of their life or even months even. So it's not practical. I'm not calling her out or anything like that, but I did see the video where she was talking. I'm pretty sure if you go back to this woman a year ago, the, you'll find that accent. And it was probably way more used now. I'm sorry, way more used than now. That's all I'm saying. Missing person. The only way I can explain this fragrance is that it smells like skin. Behind my ears, on the back of my neck, on the front of my neck, on my wrist, and my arms, and the backs of my knees, and my ankles, just in case, okay? <laughs> my everyday body spray. It's the 62. It's the Sol de Janeiro. Just go on Sheen and get it. I mean, it's probably going to come with chemicals and stuff on Sheen, but it's the same shit. 62. I have the big one. I keep this one in my gym bag. So those are all the steps that I take. And I know it seems like a lot, but trust me, it is so worth it. I just smell so good and so warm. Yeah, see, I just don't, I would never do this shit, but I don't got time for any of this shit. This just seems to totally irrelevant to me. Oh, I love it. So go be a bad bitch. Love you. Just lose weight and then you won't have this problem at all. Can I say this real quick? I'm truly at a point where I don't trust any man that tries to talk to me. True. The amount of times that I started talking to a guy and within those 24 hours, I don't want to talk to him ever again in life is ridiculous. Yeah, but men have that same thing. You know how many times I've talked to a woman and a woman said something that was absolutely insane and you go, yeah, that's... I don't want to I don't want to talk to you anymore. Sometimes it could be entertaining if you talk to somebody that's like, dude, I'm going to leave the key under the mat. I'm literally going to roofie myself right now. Whatever you want to do, this is my address. The, the key is going to be literally underneath the flower pot. Come in, do whatever you want. And you're sitting there like, I don't even know your name. And you want me to do that? What are you talking about? I, no, I'm not doing that at all. Or a girl just hits you up with, do you want to breastfeed? And then you go, well, yeah, I guess, sure. And then she goes, I'm producing milk right now. And then you go, oh, uh, that's not exactly what I thought. No, I'm good. I'm fine. And that happens. That happens sometimes. Between the lies of just like acting like they want a relationship, but then they're sexualizing me. Well, what are you expecting? You're on a dating app, right? Like that's literally the, that's the meta. That's the meta on dating apps. Like dudes just hitting you up going like, hey, yo, yo, what does your vagina smell like? Hey, if you could describe your boobs in two sentences, what would it be? What, what, what words would you use to describe your boobs? Hey, do you have a vagina? What does your butthole look like? Like that's, you know, that's just the shit you're going to get. That's, that's what it is on dating apps. And I'm not saying it's a good thing. It's just what it is. And uh, you're upset that dudes are going, yeah, I want to take you out. I want to be a girl. I, mean, I, want, I want you to be my wife. 
that's yeah dude like that's literally how it is i don't know what are you surprised about like are you just like mad that dudes are dudes like i'm not forgiving that bad behavior i agree but that's yeah that's literally what it is like most dudes are on dating apps just trying to find vagina to smell and i understand that that's not something you want to do like i get it so you it's your job to weed them out i don't know what like the point of complaining you complain about it but it's just like that's the norm the just outright disrespect immediately after playing it cool to get my number because a lot of dudes will go i got the number i'm in i'm, I'm now i can get in there i just can't even take it anymore like when men ask me what are you looking for new hoes i'm looking for new hoes okay. i'm looking to build a new list of y'all to run through the roster in a day and realize that none of y'all deserve my precious free texting true I mean, she doesn't have to date any of these dudes, bro. That's why I always say, like, if you're on dating apps, you should be definitely discerning what guys are better for you and what guys are not good for you. And this takes a lot of effort and it takes a lot of time and it also takes a lot of expertise. Like, you have to have a lot of that, a lot of patience as well. And this goes for men and women. It's a little different for men, but for women specifically, uh, yeah, most dudes are on there just to smell your vagina. And I don't think it's a surprise to any woman, like most women that by the time they turn 13, are gonna have to find, they find out right away that every dude is trying to have sex with them. So you should be well aware of this. Um, it's just an exaggeration of that on dating apps. So you have to really take your time, feel it out. Don't just have sex with anybody unless you wanna do that. Um, and if you're trying to find a relationship, it's gonna take a lot of time. It's gonna take like a lot of time. And you're gonna have to date through dudes, like in the sense of like, you're gonna have to go on dates. You're gonna have to find out what this guy's intentions are. Wait, because if you don't wait, you just give it up right away. Guess what? Then he's probably not going to contact you ever again because he got what you wanted. And that's really sad. Or he'll just perpetually use you. Anyway, we're going to end the video here, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in a heart or whatever heart that you feel like putting down there. Um, it could be blue, purple, green, orange, or just type out heart because I love those hearts. You know I do. I love the support. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Thank you for giving me time. You didn't have to give me that time today, but you gave me that time. I love you. I care for you. By the way, we might be live streaming right now at 6 p.m. EST. We're probably live streaming over here on this channel. Yeah, it's just, it says live. Does it say live right there? Like right below this video. It should show it like right here. Does it say live? Does it say live? It's like red. It's like pointed out. Is it not live? I don't know. Regardless, I might be live. You can tune in. I'm usually live almost every single week, uh, every day of the week, almost. But uh, I do have a life outside of that every once in a while. But anyway, you're a beautiful, amazing specimen of human. I really care for your entire eyebrows. They're really great. Really contoured today. Those are really delectable eyebrows, actually. Can I smell those? Oh. Um, don't let me do that again. Otherwise, I might do something that probably we both don't want unless you might want it in that case i want it too but anyway um social medias will be linked down below in the description enjoy the rest of your day guys peace